Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your JavaScript tutorial series. Now, we're gonna be talking about the disaster in JavaScript that people like to call object-oriented programming. Now, if you're coming from another language and you're like an object-oriented pro, prepare to have your brain tickled and your booty slapped because it's nothing like these other languages. Now, it's kind of similar, but there's some like key differences that if you don't understand, you will die. So pay attention. The next section in this series is gonna be a whole lot of fun. Slightly agonizing if you're uh, sort of already object oriented up here in different languages. But if you're fresh, consider yourself lucky because you don't have to unlearn stuff and learn stuff in a different way. So yeah, this is the one scenario where knowing less might actually benefit you. So stay focused though. It's still gonna be, still gonna be uh, brain tickling. Now, I've realized that throughout the series, I've regularly forgotten to mention the sponsor. So I always have to throw it in somewhere. So just to make sure I don't forget, I'm always going to try to put it at the most inconvenient time. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? Dev Mountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real world applications and get a job in the industry through Dev Mountain's career centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, Dev Mountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. So we've worked with objects in this series and we've even worked with constructors and that's what we're gonna be doing in these upcoming videos. But let's just make sure we're all on the same page and discuss what an object is. An object will describe some entity. So it could be a person, it could be a car, it could be a request, it could be whatever it is, <laughs> it could be things. So let's say this is an object that describes me. We might have a name of Caleb, an attribute of smoking hot, <laughs> and his favorite food, of course, is the one and only pizza. All right, so this describes me. Now we might have another object that describes you. So maybe your name is Pablo, and you're super nerdy and you like cheese and you know you might be doing this for everybody maybe you're trying to make an application that describes people and you're gonna have like tons of people well you don't want to have to make all these objects from scratch every time so instead we use what's known as a constructor function and consider the constructor function a thing <laughs> that takes information as input and gives you a new object. So basically we could use this constructor function to build me and you. Now as you get deeper into JavaScript, you're going to learn about classes. Now in JavaScript, there's no real difference between classes and constructor functions when it comes to functionality and the way they're used. They are different when it comes to syntax and how you actually make them. But once you understand the, the basis, the constructor function, picking up classes is a piece of cake. So if you're in React and you're working with classes, don't worry, because you can, you can pick it up super easy once you understand this junk. Now, if you're coming from C Sharp or Java or C++, classes is basically the equivalent to the constructor function in JavaScript. So let's talk a little bit about this constructor function. It's going to be just a normal function, and it's going to use this, which we talked about. When you use this inside of a constructor function, it refers to the new object you are creating. Now, the constructor function is not going to have a return. So you're not going to return a new object. Instead, you're going to invoke this function in a special way by prefixing it with new. So for example, this might be a function called person, and we might call it by saying new person. And then we would assign that to a variable. Now there's a similar way of doing this known as a factory function. In that situation, you create a function and inside the function you create a new object and you return that object. So it's a very similar thing. It's a way to do similar stuff, but I would recommend you stick with constructor functions. You might just wanna know that the factory function concept exists. So what we're gonna be doing now is in the next video, we're going to create a constructor function and learn the syntax on how to do that. It's gonna be a lot of fun and we're gonna get into some deep stuff, so. Put your big boy pants on, buckle up, and let's get started. Peace out.